Oh, no. Well, guys, we got an oil leak. Yeah. Whenever I went to change oil in it, on these engines, they have a, uh, like a triangle. It's really their oil filter, but then it's just a, a wire mesh that you clean and reuse, or I did, and they got an O-ring in there with three little 10 millimeter bolts. They got six millimeter threads on it. It takes a 10 millimeter wrench to undo them loosen and tighten them and uh well whenever i went to take them out it's like huh that top one was really loose well i went to put it back together and it was stripped out so, so whoever serviced this thing just ah eh, it's not mine i don't care tighten them up and just strip the threads out of that aluminum block so today we're going to drill those out we're going to put helicals in them and we're going to solve that problem and Hopefully I can get those bolts tight enough then to uh, make the O-ring seal and we can get rid of that oil leak. So uh, y'all stay tuned. All right, guys. Here's that triangle I was talking about. And there's a screen on the other side. And uh, there's an O-ring that seals around here. But this bolt acted fine. That bolt would never tighten up. And then this bolt seemed like it was pulling the threads out. So it's on the side of the engine with the primary clutch here. And I'm hoping that I don't have to take this back off to get in here to do this. Because I, I've got to drill it out, and then I've got to go in and tap all the holes, and then put the inserts in. So, let's see what we can get. Here's a uh, helical thread repair kit. Now, uh, I took this bolt out, and this is that one bolt that was missing in the top. That was very, very loose. It would never tighten up. But I measured the threads and it was an M6. So I got me an M6 helical. Here's your part number for this kit. And included in this kit, you got your instructions and whatnot. But here's your drill, your tap, your punch that knocks the tang, that little thing there out, and then your installation tool. This is what this tool is what drives these into the threaded hole after you drill it. And it's it's very simple. You got a stripped out hole, you drill it out, you thread it, you drive your insert in, and you're done. Okay guys, I've got that rag stuck in there to keep shavings and whatnot from going on in the engine. But as you can see, that upper hole up there has no threads whatsoever. This one's got a little bit, and that narrow is the best, but we're gonna put helicals in all three. That way we can solve that problem and not have to worry about it no more. Well guys, I weren't lucky enough to uh, be able to do it without taking that primary clutch off. So, here's how I take that clutch off. I've got my own homemade clutch puller. Took a piece of five eighths round bar, and it's it just does fit this ID. There's not a whole lot of slop, so it can't get in there and flex and bow like some of these uh, pullers that you buy that are aftermarket do. They they run such a small diameter here and it's a soft material that it just bows in there anytime you put pressure on there. The best way that I've seen to do this is if you got the engine out. You can fill this up full of uh, engine oil and take and run your bolt in there and it'll pop it off using hydraulic pressure. But it's still, the engine's still in the cart. So the next best thing is to make your own puller and it's a 3 8 16th thread. And I just, I had some threaded rod and I took a nut and just spot, spot welded that on there. But you drop that in there, and you run that nut in there, or that bolt, whichever you got, run it in there and keep wrenching on that nut and it'll pull this off the crank. 
crank's got a tapered shaft there and it's got a little rust on it. But anyway, pops it right off. Okay guys, got all those holes drilled out. And uh, being I had to take that primary clutch off, I just went ahead and pulled the cover for the timing belt off. I want to check that, make sure all that still looked good. And I got to thinking back in the earlier videos, I didn't show a picture of the timing belt. So here you'll get to see the timing belt and the uh, it's the uh, counterbalance shaft that actually runs the timing belt. It's not run off the crank. It's it's gear driven from the crank internally in the engine, but then it runs an idler pulley for tension and then on up to the cam. So we'll get y'all flipped around and I'll show you that and show you where I drilled out them three holes and uh, we're getting ready to run a tap in there and then we're going to insert that helical and we'll be like, we'll be better than brand new. Okay guys, we're under the golf cart here and right there's them three holes that we drilled out. You can see the chips, that's why I stuck that rag in there to keep them chips out of the engine. But we drilled those three out, we're getting ready to run a tap in those and then uh, here is your crankshaft. Your primary clutch slides on here. This crank is tapered and it, it's a matching taper in the clutch. So your clutch sets here and this is your actual crankshaft. And then here is your counter counterbalance shaft that keeps the engine balanced and makes them run so smooth. That's this shaft. Your idler that has, it's an offset eccentric and it's got a spring in there that tensions your belt. And then there's your cam pull it up there so and uh, I had the uh, the gasket on the camshaft was leaking oil so I think that's where all this oil is coming from because the fan blew it across the motor and it was all over here but then I got that cleaned up and we still had an oil leak and I think it was due to this because you couldn't get these three these two bolts tied enough to make that o-ring right there seal only this one would get tied enough so we get them helicals in there this problem be solved Okay, here you can see these two bottom holes are just drilled out still. And this upper hole, I've uh, went ahead and threaded with the tap that comes in the helical kit. So, all I like is these two down here, and, but I just want to tell you to make sure you use some lubrication on your tap. And make sure you keep the threads clear and clean. If, uh, if you start getting a lot of chips bound up on it, go ahead and back it out of the hole and uh, clear the chips off the tap and then go back. But being that oil is just dripping out, I'm just getting my cutting oil there. Engine oil will be all right. This, this is a cast aluminum block, and, or I guess it's aluminum. It's either aluminum or uh, magnesium. I don't, I'm not sure. But it's not real hard to drill. It weren't hard to cut, you know, cut these threads. So it's not a real hard material, whatever it is. So this oil will be just fine for it. Got the oil on the tap. We're going to start on this hole here. Make sure you got your tap just as squared and perpendicular to that hole as possible. And then just start it easy. And you'll feel the tap grab once it grabs. Right there it is. And see this is a spiral flute tap. The good thing about a spiral flute tap is as you're turning it into a blind hole, which these three holes are blind. And what that means is that the threads and the hole doesn't go all the way through the material. So it goes so far and it stops. So if you got a spiral flute tap, as you can see, the chips come out. If you just got a straight flute tap, it pushes the chips into the hole. So that's nice about this spiral flute tap. But I'm going to back it out starting to get a little tough to turn so we'll back it out and take it over and blow the chips off of the tap uh, I, I, I prefer blowing the chips off and the reason that is is because if you use a wire brush on this tap it takes a chance on dulling it and if you get a dull tap well you're not doing no good so and then if you wipe it off of a paper towel you get paper towel fibers on it and then it's it just it's a whole lot easier just to use compressed air to blow them off so I'll be right back all right there's that tap all nice and clear nice and clean so we're going to 
get some more oil back on it and go back in there and make sure you start it back on the threads you just cut. You don't want to double cut a new set just like that. It should turn in real easy. That's why you know you're back in the same set of threads. Now we're going to finish tapping this hole. And we'll go to the depth. If it gets hard to turn, don't turn it. Don't force it because you sure don't want to break that tap off in there because you break that tap off, <laughs> they're not fun to get out. I'm going to go clean this tap one more time and go back in there one last time and get that bottom. Got another shot of oil here. Start it back in them threads. in there all right right there that tap is getting tight so I'm not going to force it to go no more we're at the bottom of that hole Okay, we got all those holes tapped. They're drilled and tapped, and we're going to clean these chips off. We're going to use some car cleaning, clean these chips off, and then we're going to run them inserts in there, and we'll be done with this job. All right, we got all those holes tapped. I took some carb clean and run and sprayed in there, then cleared it out with some compressed air. So we're ready to put them inserts in. Okay, guys, here we go. This is our insert, our driver, and our alignment tool. Place that in there. You take it, insert, and drop down in there. and Start threading that down. And there's a tang on that insert driver right there that grabs that cross piece. And then you can thread that through. And once it starts poking through a little bit, there you go. We'll take it and hold that against the engine there, and it'll be ready to go in. Just like that. You'll know whenever you, it grabs, it'll it'll have its own little feel to it. And then, you know, of course, it's hanging there. So keep this loose. Keep your guide loose. And then whenever it the insert ex, exits the guide, you'll know. Like it right there. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's got a little bit protruding still. So we need to run that on in. You want that flush with the face of that material or whatever, you know, whatever you're putting it in, you want it flush with that. So that looks like it right there. Take and thread your driver out. Right there it is, folks. It's mounted in there flush. You have steel threads in there now, not this cast aluminum machine threads. You've actually got steel threads in there. And that way, these bolts here, make sure that thread's clear. That right there, looky there, guys. We are in business. We're like downtown right now. That way, these threads can, these bolts can be installed and took out numerous times because of course every time you change oil in it you want to clean that filter so these threads will last forever now
they'll last longer than the engine, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now that we got that insert in, you need to take your little rod and drive and drive in there, and that'll break that tang off the back, and that sets the insert. And you'll be done with the re thread repair job. Okay, guys, here's that oil filter for these robbing the engines on these Easy Go golf carts. And you can see it's kind of a uh, like a wire mesh for the fil filter. And, you know, you can take them out, spray them down with some brake clean, clean them up. Make sure your O-ring's still good in here. And that's those three holes that we just got done drilling out and putting helicals in and now that we can get these three tight enough this surface here should seal against that o-ring right there so with that sealing hopefully we have solved this oil leak all right there's those bolts reinstalled and those new threads i was able to torque them down where they should be so Hopefully that'll solve our oil leak there. All right, all that's left to do is to top it off with oil and it holds one and a half quarts. If anybody needs to know, one and a half quarts, two cylinder robins, easy go, the 295. But, uh, that should fix our oil leak. Those bolts are run in tight. That O-ring should be sealed now. So uh, I believe we got her fixed. Y'all have a good one. Thank you for watching.